Hello, I'm Andrea McDonald, the founder of IdeaMe, a global network to encourage everybody to participate in the future. IdeaMe is a podcast, creator series and mentor program. I'm here with Commissioner Virginia Sinkavichus, European Commissioner for the Oceans, Environment and Fisheries. In your words, Commissioner, who are you? First of all, uh, hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Virginius Sinkavichus. I am a husband, a father of two, uh, a son and a brother. At the same time, I am currently the European Commissioner for Environment, Oceans and Fisheries. Being a part of uh, European ambition to become climate neutral uh, by 2050 and having an opportunity to deliver to this task that will change lives of future generation is, is uh, huge and probably the biggest motivations the one can have. At the same time, uh, I'm honored uh, and privileged to, 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 to be serving at this duty. You are the youngest European commissioner ever. Uh, your appointment by uh, President um, Dr. von der Leyen uh, was seen as uh, one of the most ambitious appointments. Could you explain uh, your journey to this point, uh, how it works in terms of um, who suggests you, suggests you for the position? How does the process work? Uh, of course, I was nominated by the government of, of Lithuania. Each member state nominates one uh, commissioner, which has to then go through the hearings at the European Parliament. So in case of uh, my uh, homeland, Lithuania, uh, the nominee usually is nominated by the government, but then has to be approved by the president and then the final voting is by the national parliament. And when after the national parliament voting, you are nominated for the position. So this is what I went through. Uh, at that time, I was serving as the minister for uh, economy and innovation of the Republic of Lithuania. And uh, yes, uh, Madam President Ursula von der Leyen, she trusted me with uh, this task and this portfolio accepting me on her team and later I succeeded uh, to convince uh, European Parliament that I am the right fit uh, to drive the change uh, Europe and our planet needs. Could you explain in greater detail uh, your remit uh, within the context of the European Green Deal, which is overseen by First Vice President Franz Timmerman? First of all, uh, probably, uh, let's start with the, with the, with the oceans. Uh, Europe has a very ambitious regulatory framework to protect its sea basins and oceans. And that revolves around the uh, Marine Strategy Framework Directive, which again obliges EU member states to achieve good status of our seas and oceans. It, it helps member states to monitor the impacts and identify the pressures affecting the sea and the life uh, it sustains, making it easier to design strategies to reduce them then, of course, uh, it is important that uh, in the major, our initiative, Green Deal, you find uh, at the center, at the core, initiatives led by me. So it's a circular economy action plan. It's, uh, of course, biodiversity strategy for 2030. Just recently, we adopted as a first step towards zero pollution ambition towards toxic free environment chemical strategy. Uh, but also, uh, probably, I would love to mention that uh, we are going ahead with a number of international initiatives on protection of uh, uh, marine protected areas in Antarctica, on Weddell Sea. Also, uh, we're driving a new Arctic policy. 
seeking better conservation of, of, of Arctic uh, resources. And uh, finally, probably it is worth mentioning that uh, we are keen on um, reaching the SDGs, uh, Sustainable Development Goals, which everyone signed under. And of course, we want to be the ones leading by example. So um, maybe you could explain how the system works in order to um, get these laws online uh, that fall under your remit. Um, there are um, four main European bodies, as I understand it, the European Council, the European Parliament, the European P um, Commission, as well as the European Supreme Court. How does the process work? Uh, maybe using one of your examples, uh, the, the, one of the initiatives you have uh, recently been working on, how does it work um, to, to get it from an idea to making it law. You very well pointed out. First of all, it starts with the idea, with the vision. Uh, usually that, 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 that the, then vision uh, becomes some sort of uh, paper uh, legislation at the DG level. So under uh, my supervision, there are two DGs, uh, DG Mari responsible for, for oceans and, 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 and fisheries, and then uh, DG Envy, DG uh, responsible for environment. And uh, usually it's, of course, then being drafted within DG level. We, of course, consult the science. We consult the, we open for public consultation. It's a long process, which involves lots of, lots of stakeholders and participants, because, of course, we take responsibility for 27 member states. And each legislation have to be adjusted so that it fits uh, them as well. Let's say we go fast through this process now, but usually it takes a few months. Uh, then uh, it, of course, goes through inter-service consultation inside the house. Uh, I mean, the European Commission, where different DGs or, or different uh, cabinets from other, other, other um, uh, commissioners involved, they also bring their suggestions to the table. And when the inter-service consultation, sometimes it requires a couple of them, is finalized uh, and approved, then usually, of course, it has to be in line with, with the treaty. So legal advice is also extremely important here. But when it's approved, it goes through, uh, through the special chefs. Uh, then it goes to the uh, heads of cabinets meetings. And when the, it's approved at the heads of cabinets meetings, it usually goes to college, where again, commission takes all the decisions um, collegiality uh, within the collegiality principle, so all commissioners has to agree. Uh, uh, if it's agreed among commissioners, usually that's what happens. Uh, then it's an official sort of proposal, which has to go through then uh, uh, Parliament and the European Council to be uh, fully adopted. Usually for that, uh, Council and uh, Parliament uh, adopts their mandate for a trialogue, and then, of course, uh, it's it's being negotiated at the trialogue level uh, and, 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 and decided on, on final, I don't know, changes or, 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 or so on. And then, uh, of course, it has to go through the final votings through, uh, through uh, Parliament and be approved by the Council. And then, of course, it becomes already something that member states has to implement until the some some uh, time so it's a long process of course the european commission is the only one of those bodies um other than the supreme court of course um that that isn't political uh, despite the fact that your country nominates you um the the ties as it as it were are severed in as far as um your job as the commissioner is concerned um, could you explain um, during the course of that process how you allow the public and other organizations to, to, to feed into um, planning, developing, road mapping to 
the laws. I saw on the European Commission website that there are various stages where the public are invited and the, something like this is particularly interesting to idea me because what we're trying to do is to encourage everybody to participate in these major issues. Could you talk a little bit about that please? Absolutely, so one of the most common is of course the stakeholder consultation which usually the initiative is open for and uh, let's say NGOs, uh, they are extremely active on that, sending their suggestions uh, and so on. But uh, let's not forget a very simple uh, step uh, as of citizens dialogue, where commissioners meet with, with citizens, uh, talk and discuss uh, different ideas where citizens also have a, 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 a freedom to express themselves and, and, and tell how to them it looks right uh, to do so and, and etc. So there is a multiple uh, possibilities to, 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 to get involved. We have now social media uh, where most of the commissioners are on it and not only one but uh, on, on many of, of, of the social uh, media pages. So uh, I think in a, there is a multiply poss multiple possibilities to, to, to get involved the process, uh, the decision-making becomes much more interesting. Robert Bilot, um, lawyer, and uh, Mark Ruffalo, movie star, who starred in uh, Dark Waters, um, the story uh, based on the work of Robert Bilot, who has filed a number of legal cases against uh, DuPont, um, for going against um, the usage of PFOA chemicals, C8, uh, forever, forever chemicals. Um, they, they, they spoke at the European Parliament. Um, could you talk to our audience about the impact that um, that sort of engagement um, in a sense, citizens' engagement in that way uh, affected your chemical plan of the 14th of October 2020 this year. So, first of all, uh, speaking about the chemical strategy, uh, its goal, of course, to, 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 to protect, first of all, protect, of course, citizens from the exposure to harmful chemicals, the one uh, that you mentioned, for example, like persistent substances, who stay in our soil, in our groundwater, in our uh, bodies for a while. Secondly, of course, protecting nature from, from exposure. And of course, we're ready to take a number of actions through reach uh, regulation on uh, protecting, protecting um, most vulnerable groups on, of course, tackling the different uh, types of product groups uh, where, of course, uh, uh, harmful chemicals would be substituted if there is a uh, substitute uh, chemical available, if that can be done. If that's not impo if that's impossible to do, then of course there must be sufficient explanation then why its uh, use of uh, one or the other chemical is critical in, 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 in such product. On the other hand, we of course seeking to encourage competitiveness and uh, innovation of our chemicals industry uh, by helping them develop uh, alternatives and, of course, use them. Uh, and, of course, that they would be safe, uh, safe already, safe made, uh, safe uh, by design chemicals. So, um, what sort of impact did Robert Bilot and Mark Ruffalo have on um, feeding into that mm -hmm. process? Um, because of course they're citizens as well. Um, how important is it for people like that, for people like us to, to speak up? And how does that process work? How do you get to talk to the European Parliament? I think, uh, you know, we, we, we're speaking about one story, which is of course uh, become a Hollywood movie in the end of the day. And then uh, absolutely it's easy to speak about those stories, but there is a number uh, of initiatives of bottom yeah. up approaches which uh, which manage to gather citizen support, gather citizen signatures and, and of course draw the attention of politicians. And 
I would call the biggest uh, probably victory of citizens is actually uh, drawing politicians' attention into climate change. And here we're speaking not about something um, small in size, but but rather a huge transition, which getting a whole world on board. Uh, and this is uh, only due to citizens, due to those uh, people who walked every Friday in, 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 in peaceful uh, climate uh, protests, climate marches, uh, and, and that, the, the, that movement, uh, Friday for Futures, was something what inspired, inspired the European Green Deal as well. Talking of uh, climate change, uh, you obviously follow the Sustainable Development Goals um, guidelines, uh, the Paris uh, Climate Agreement, COP26 is coming up uh, November next year. Could, could you talk of the, um, the Commission's role uh, within the international context? Because you do a lot in trying to uh, encourage and move uh, the remit of the Paris Agreement forward um, as a Euro European entity um, could, could you talk of how you do that? Absolutely. So challenges we are speaking and discussing today, like biodiversity loss or climate change, uh, they cannot be solved uh, at the EU level only. We need everyone on board. And by everyone, I mean other countries uh, around the world. Uh, and uh, I'm happy that more and more of them actually are, are joining us. Uh, but also, you know, biodiversity loss is one of the most significant challenges of our times. It's uh, just like climate change and, and closely connected, in fact, as that is actually driving the decline of, 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 of life on the Earth. And it's a vicious circle because nature as a powerful carbon sink is actually our best ally in fighting climate change. But not all policymakers understand that and getting that message across is one of the biggest challenges, of course, I face, and uh, we hope to deliver these messages at the United Nations Conference in, 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 in Kunming, in China, next year, which aims to set new targets to protect the Earth's natural capital uh, and, of course, uh, support systems. Uh, and the EU is ready to make big commitments, uh, in particular towards developing countries, to mobilize resources to help our partners take ambitious steps towards protecting climate and nature. And wherever you live, uh, investing in nature restoration means investing in local jobs and business opportunities, while also, of course, ensuring a truly green recovery from the crisis. And now it's time to do this as unemployment is high and interest uh, rates are low. And that's why Europe's recovery plan will reinforce our tools to invest in nature restoration, including forests and wetlands, rivers and coastal areas, organic uh, agriculture, uh, of course, green and blue infrastructure. But most importantly, uh, we want to lead this transition by example. And, and we are more than happy to share, uh, uh, to share our best practices. And uh, some tend to call uh, sort of this as a competition uh, among uh, the countries. I think there is no competition in, in green transition because uh, if we achieve uh, color, carbon neutrality by 2050, absolutely everyone is a winner. You spoke earlier about businesses and it, it, your uh, remit being all-encompassing. Um, there's an initiative um, called the Circular Economy. Could you talk of that? That probably requires uh, additional uh, podcast. Uh, the Circular Economy Action Plan, uh, first of all, focuses uh, on, uh, on, of course, uh, decreasing pressure on environment. Uh, because uh, one of the biggest pressures on in, in environment is, of course, extraction of natural resources. Unfortunately, those precious resources, which uh, especially here in Europe, we don't have too much, they usually use in our economy way too short and, and then they being wasted. So the goal of circular economy is of course to keep them as long as possible in, in, in our economy, uh, uh, to establishing uh, principles of reuse, repair, uh, recycle, uh, 
so in order that those resources are really kept in the economy as long as possible. But uh, of course, it takes a huge transition touching upon many areas. And the first of uh, areas which we're starting with and the first uh, action under the circular economy action plan is actually batteries regulation. Out of everybody you've met so far, um, who's made the greatest impact on you in moving your career forward? Uh, that's, uh, that's, 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 that's a good uh, question. Uh, probably I'm not focusing now about my career forward. Now it's the, 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 the whole focus is on the current capacities. I've been privileged with a unique position which I have to deliver uh, a lot and which is going to have impact for many, many years ahead. And uh, I have to uh, give all my energy and uh, resources uh, to this mission. And what's next for me, we'll see. Commissioner Sinkavicic, thank you very much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure uh, for being here and I wish you to stay healthy and all the best.